You're listening to DraftKings Network. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. We kind of glossed over it last segment. Juju, we have the picture on uh, the YouTube if you want to check it out. Juju was in the blind side. Like, there he is right there, looking exactly the same age as he is today. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, they thought I was capped out. You feel me? I was in the movie for real with the same chain I got on today, man. You feel me? Same OG. So they came to <laughs> what neighborhood was it? This was actually... Uh, uh, dang, it was in the hood in Atlanta. They was about to destroy it. In the, uh, and I don't know if young L.A. I'm not sure what the, what the hood was, but. It's not as important. The fact that it is uh, the hood is what I was going to because I was embarrassed yesterday. I took my son to the barbershop, get a haircut, and my man gave out some limp dap. Oh, no. Oh, damn, damn, damn. I disowned him. I threw him right under the bus. I was like, whose kid is that out here dishing out limp dap? I was so disappointed because, I, I mean, he knows he's 10. He knows the importance of a quality dap. It is it, it matters. But you were talking earlier about the importance of failure. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he failed in that moment. <laughs> Be stronger with your greeting. I mean, it's dap is a cultural thing that is very important amongst the black men. It expresses something. I saw Hawk walked in the studio, saw Juju in the morning. I saw them, and then I gave them a firm dap. I, it, it expresses a lot of things. M most importantly, I think that was developed. It's an important thing. You think I'm just messing with you, but I'm not. I'm serious, Billy. Get ready. It was developed during the Vietnam War. It was, a, a, hmm. it was meant for the black GIs to express to one another that they had each other's back because the white soldiers did not. So that is where DAP was created. And DAP still uh, persists today as an acknowledgement that, we in this together, I got your back. I went to Aspen last year, spring break. Breach. Not that many black people there. I saw black people, and there's a kind of an unwritten rule. The fewer black people that are around, the more excited you got to be when you see each other. Hey, Amen. I ran into a brother on the slopes. I was so happy. He just gave me a little, hello, sir. Oh, no. Hell, nah. I was like, what? We... Was uh, I got nervous because what if something pop off? I need to know that you got my back. I saw that same man later at the restaurant, the bar, in the hotel. So I gave him another chance. Maybe he was exhausted. We complain about family trips. They're tiring. Maybe he was exhausted. A second chance. Huh? Walked over to my man. What's up, brother? Extended the hand at dap angle. This is important. I did not put it at handshake angle. Dangle. Yeah. That's dap, a, that dangle it. is important. It is important. Mm, I absolutely. didn't go handshake angle. I went dap angle. What is dap angle? Just if you can explain that to the it audience. Just just try. Yeah. If you don't know, then yeah, you don't but know. I know. Yeah. It's, it's about it's the a, people listening. It's a it's a it's a posture. It's like a 15% or 15 degree tilt with a body posture that suggests, like, no, we bought the dap and the clap is important. So I approached him, and this man converted my dap. It's he, a handshake? He twisted me down. Wow. Oh, that fool boy. twisted me down. Insult. I packed up. We got to get out of here. This ain't <laughs> safe for us here, family. We must go. You know where I came? I came to Miami. Yeah. Immediately after, straight to Miami. <laughs> you know, find the safety and some daps. I will... Uh, and my son knows how to give dap. It and doesn't of, sound like it. Of all, oh, he gives plenty of daps. So what happened? Was he choked. Like an off I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and of all places. Of all places, right. At the, the barbershop. Barber oh. You can't fumble the dap. Yeah. At the barbershop. If we were anywhere else, I'd have pulled him aside. Like, yeah, hey, your dap was a little weak. But in there, made a scene. <laughs> Whose boy is this giving out this limp dap? <laughs> so, so whoever's son this is needs to stand up right now and... Speak for themselves. You didn't have to say a word. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you just, I don't know. You got to put them on dap punishment for yeah. a month. Mm. You mean, you got to dap off for everybody, <laughs> even the little girls in your class, dap them off dap for up. you see them. Yeah, yeah, it's practice. important. I, I was wondering, is there, are there other, like, customs and cultures that you feel are important that you need to pass on? What What is it for you guys and your, who have kids? Is there something else? Because dap is the highest one for me that if, if my son goes in the world not knowing how to dap, I feel like I failed. How do you dap, Jeremy uh, Tache? It's a great question. Stick out my hand for a firm handshake, just like this, Juju. 
Looks yeah. great, right? Mm, yeah. I mean, nah, man, I'm playing into the character. I hear, like, if you really want to know, I mean, oh, I could. Let me see it. Let me see it, Jeremy Dapp. Get that mm. white guy sound already. Okay, I don't know where You it. are yeah. Aspen. I mean. It's the one that <laughs> says white guy. Really you got to have the right angle. The next angle. Okay. You got to have the right angle. You don't want your arm. Whoa, whoa, Jeremy, you know what I don't need? I don't need yeah. you coaching me up on DAP. I'm just trying to tell you how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Deliver the DAP. Let's make it abundantly clear. I'm not trying to explain the DAP to anybody. Yeah. I'm just trying to explain don't how a DAP for me, me would work. I would never DAP explain. It's natural. Mm -hmm. You don't need to coach it. Do it. He's Let me white explaining. It. Okay. All right. That was oh, a D. That's, that's a Is limp, that fine? Limp D. Yeah. It's a solid DAP. It's a solid <laughs> DAP. If he says it's a solid DAP. Okay. Okay. Average DAP? It's average. Limp D going in dangle. Yeah. What are we talking about? What's your DAP look like, Billy? I don't know. It's time to see the dap. All right. Let's see your dap let's, game. Let's be careful. All right. All right. Let's see, Billy. Yeah. All right. So he's walking okay. around. Okay. You nervous? Give the camera a second That's to it. catch up. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. I know. He caught, it looked like he caught wrist on that. It looked like he caught like wrist on that. Solid dap to <laughs> me. Again. No, no redos. What's up, Billy? Oh, oh, all right, there we go. Bad. That was a good grab right there. That was a good grab. I don't know. That was a grab. I don't know. It didn't sound good. How many daps? You can't have oh, this many daps. You can't oh. have this many oh, chances at no, a dap. No, oh, Tony's no, in here. No, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like, Tony needs oh, no. to teach us how to dap. Oh, here we go. No, no. Oh, no. no. That's bad. No, hold on, hold on. Again. Tony's yeah, going to explain the dab. Here's the problem. It's that it, it's, Billy's doing it's this. It's yes. It's the yes. stern dab. Yes. We don't need that. No, it's you don't need that. Yeah. Show him how it's done, Tony. It's fingers. You gotta no, give me your hand. Give me your hand, Billy. Coach him up. Give me your hand, Billy. He will not you go stay here, up. here, yes. and that's it. There you go. Dap it. Oh, you don't want to learn it from me. Okay. Hand sanitizer for No. No. Oh, my God. Oh, you can't you can't sanitize the, after the dab. Oh, but Juju's doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, it's Juju. I don't Ken. know where Tony's Juju been. Ken. All right, so I guess I was wondering if Juju there Ken. <laughs> yeah, Ju Juju's good, man. Juju, yeah, you got to sanitize. You yeah, don't, don't know. know where it's right, I don't doubt two random brothers. Yeah. I don't know where their hands been. All right. <laughs> I'm so sorry, random. my brother. <laughs> uh, Billy, what is it hey. that you want to pass on to your daughters? Is there a cultural thing? I'm none of what I just did now. I, won't pass <laughs> I mean, down. I, I, your daughters don't need to know how to dap. Like, I'm not teaching my daughters the importance of dap. Like, it's just not a thing. But the son got to know the dap. I was so ashamed. So what, did you tell him anything? Did you correct the behavior? Or? I said, were you giving that weak ass dap? I was like, I, I'm joking about making a big scene. But I was like, that was soft dap. Like, what is going on? I was concerned. I, I didn't know where I went wrong. Where have I failed you, my boy? <laughs> Embarrassed me, so, like but that. it sounds like it was more your fault. Shot. It yeah. was. I take yeah. full responsibility. Hmm. It was at the. Well, what it, are you yelling at him for? I mean, I was. I didn't yell at him. I. I really was like, why you get out? We guess that. And then I sit in the chair for the 30, 45 minutes to get a haircut, and I reflected on my entire life and where I went wrong, where I had a son, because I've seen him give strong dap. He see his friends strong dap, strong dap all the time. Give me strong dap. He even got the hug dap down. Then we go to the barbershop. He gave me a week when I was crushed, man. Greg Cody, you ever had a secret handshake with somebody? No. No, I haven't. Not even Radke? No, no, not even Radke. That's shocking. Yeah. Yes, and. We should get one before the day of with me. Yeah, I like I that. Love, right. I love no, you right. never know that. Yeah, we got to. I looked up the etymology of DAP to see if it was an acronym for something. Mm -hmm. and, and it does have something here. I'm curious what you think it literally means uh dignity and pride correct yeah. you're trying to you're trying yeah, to flat quiz come on you're trying to flat oh, quiz man, i mean you should be angry you should be, should be upset like i don't know my life boy man huh. he, 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 had, he had the opportunity just to say it stands for but he chose not to say it stands for he said i'm wondering if you know I'm essentially wondering. said I'm checking your blackness. Mm -hmm. This man tried to pull my black card. And on congratulations. And guess what you had in your back black? <laughs> congratulations. You just renewed your right. black card. Congratulations, you had black. The, that's right. <laughs> he had, <laughs> Dominique had the big joker in his pocket. He ain't know it. I thought he was coming for me. Like, I don't know nothing about, about my blackness. How Greg's in you? charge of who's holding the black card? <laughs> I'm confused here. And just like that, Dominique is black. Thank that's you, right. Greg. Appreciate exactly. it. Thank you for Thank your you. approval. No Got it for another year. <laughs> Does handing down a language count? Absolutely. I think especially uh, when you're in a country that obviously doesn't speak the language. Uh, well, I guess we don't. As a United States, we don't have an official language, right? No. But it's not Spanish. So I think no. handing down Spanish counts. Yeah, like that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because my, my wife has set like our Disney Plus to Spanish. 
Because, like, we speak Spanish to our daughter, right? But, like, most of the interaction is, is, is in English. Right. Now, where we live is, like, you can go anywhere and only speak Spanish and you're fine, right? My mother-in-law speaks to her in Spanish. We speak to her kind of in both. But, like, we'll do Spanish and English, but both. My parents speak to her mostly in English, but she doesn't want her to lose the Spanish. So, like, a lot of times the shows are set to Spanish. So I've been watching the show Fancy Nancy. I don't know Ooh. if you got have you watched Fancy Nancy? It's a book, right? Yeah, but now it's like a Disney yeah. Plus show or it's on, available on Disney Plus, whatever. The gist of it from what I've gotten, because I'm watching it in Spanish, is it's a little girl who's fancy and <laughs> pretends to be French. So I'm watching a show in Spanish of a girl <laughs> who's in Spanish pretending to be French. Oh. It's, it's kind of confusing. Yeah, I've lost the, kind of the plot. I remember the Fancy Nancy bro books. The point of yeah. it was, like, I think to teach, teach kids vocabulary. It's like, I'm Fancy Nancy. I use bigger words than I have to to teach you about words. And I can't imagine that. What's up, Juju? Drop one of clues bombs, please. Middle, middle Art Media, we should make a cartoon for the kids. Oh. A little tutorial, something simple that can involve Ron McGill making noises. Yeah. yeah. And he can be involved in, uh, Dan would love it. You know he loves hippopotamus, uh, my, mm -hmm. or whatever the plural is. You nailed it. Come I on, like uh, Carl, like let's get on the uh, Middle Art uh, cartoon. 80-20. 80-20. Yes. Your way. Ron McGill's way. Yeah. In Doubt Man's way. <laughs> In the business. So, what are you passing on to, to Chris, Greg? What am I passing on? Um, yeah, what's the cultural culturally significant thing that you want to make sure that Chris uh, remembers and holds on to? Is it language? I, dap? I will say that um, I was never uh, a hugger most of my life. Mm -hmm. Like, my dad and I never hugged. And then uh, very late in his life, when I was preparing to lose him, uh, we began to hug, and I am passing that along to my oh, sons. It's very nice, I Greg. Think we're, we're much more uh, intimate physically in terms of hugging and stuff like that than than we used to be, and that's a concerted effort. I want that. Wild Bill didn't hug. No. Mm. Hmm. Nope. That was beautiful. The hard network out is coming. Do not get here with it right here. <laughs> just, just I'm gonna lay on it for you, brother. Thank you. Way to go, Juju. <laughs> Hey, it's Mike Ryan, and I've been outdoors more than I'd like to admit this summer. It's really hot. I've been burning through shirts. Can't go anywhere in South Florida without a backup shirt. I'm just telling you right now. But that's going to be the second best advice I give you here. The best advice I can possibly give you, it's cracking open that beautiful white can and letting the great taste of Miller Lite hit your taste buds so hard, you feel it in your heart. Have yourself some Miller time, folks. Miller time. You know the time when you and your friends can get together and enjoy the simple things in life? Why don't you let these wonderful summer moments get amplified with Miller Lite? Because when it's summertime, it tastes like Miller time. The best beer there is. I promise you, there isn't going to be a better decision that you can make this summer than just taking a sip out of that beautiful white can. Make unforgettable summer memories with Miller Lite. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan. Or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Don Lebatard. He, for some reason, uh, would do a Gary Stevens impersonation of the offensive <laughs> coordinator of the Miami Dolphins and the <laughs> University of Miami. Uh, go ahead. Do you want to do that for the people? Your Gary Stevens <laughs> impersonation? You want to give people some of that? 30 years in the making. Stugatz. What? Who needs me? Oh, that? Uh, I've what? Been, I've yeah. that my whole life. You're going to go to Buffalo <laughs> and win with Bernie Pomley? <laughs> Who needs me? <laughs> this is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. Training camp fights. As we record this, I'm seeing on my Twitter feed that uh, joint practice between the Ravens and... Uh, the Washington football team, they're still a commanders for now, right? Even though they're going to change their name again. Uh, they had a little inner squad uh, practice that escalated into a fight because of a little scuffle receivers. I've been in a bunch of training camp fights. They're fun. Well, why are they fun? <laughs> because everybody knows it's not serious. You're just tired of each other, tired yeah. of being out there, I mean, tired of sweating. The joint practice is a risky one because joint practice can escalate, and we've seen those escalate to bad places. People swinging he helmets, Aaron Donald looking angry, which is a bad place. But the like within your own team, 
we don't really want to hurt each other. We just want to fight because we're mad. Like, those those are fine. I've been in plenty of those. I've never been in a joint. Like, that's risky. That could clear the bench. I see uh, Justin Tucker put his helmet on like he was walking in to get busy at the end of this video that's on the Internet. You think Justin Tucker can fight? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I think he can. I, I'm not going to doubt Justin Tucker. He should have the red jersey on, by the way. He's important. More importantly, do you think Justin, do you think Amin thinks he can beat Justin Tucker in a fight? Because... Justin Tucker. I mean, I mean, he definitely he could, does. He said he could beat Messi, which, of huh. course not. I mean, he's getting his ass fight? beat by Messi. Yeah, he did. He salute would literally the- kick his ass. All right. Salute to my brother, I mean, but he do not want Justin Tucker in nothing. <laughs> that boy got that look in his eyes. I know when I see it. He got it. Yeah, he's saying opera. Oh, hell no. Nah. Watch out. The Ravens. He's dangerous, yes. <laughs> the Ravens, I don't know, as you may know, have a 24 game preseason winning streak. I remember being there and John Harbaugh cared about winning every game. It was about the attitude that you take into every game was kind of how he felt about it. It's clear that they still care a great deal about winning preseason games. I can't imagine a worse thing to do than win a bunch of preseason games because it just sets you up to be mocked. It just sets you up to be made fun of because if they, fortunately for them, they've been successful. I mean, pretty much since their inception, one of the best organizations in football. But mm-hmm. it's not fun to make fun of that. That's boring. Let's make fun of them caring too much about the preseason. Did that annoy you that Harbaugh had that kind of like... No, because I was brainwashed. And we all like... Like he was doing the right thing. He was yeah. doing it the right way. Yeah, that's how we all felt. It was like, yeah, you take this incredibly seriously. Everything matters. All of this matters. We don't let uh, anything slip. Like I believed and I agreed. And I wanted to win the preseason game too. We're out here playing. Let's freaking win. When did you stop being brainwashed? Because, like, we were watching the first episode of Hard Knocks last week, and we were talking about Robert Sala's, like, speech at the beginning where he was talking about bald eagles and crows, and you fly up, and then the crow suffocates and falls (laughs) down and dies and all that stuff. And I was was telling Stu Gatz on a podcast, I was like, I feel like you can only really get motivated if you want to be motivated. You know what I mean? Because, like, if you're just listening to that speech, you're like, this is nonsense. Like, what are you doing? But if you're in it and you're, like, brainwashed at the time, you're like, yeah. Like, we're going to go out there and we're going to beat the Falcons or whatever it is that the point of the speech was. You know what I mean? So, like, at what point did you, I presumably after your career, look back and say, like, yeah, a lot of that was... A lot of that was yeah, just nonsense. I mean, I, I say brainwashed, but I think maybe we're different. We're brainwashed by different things to different degrees because at the time, and I don't judge anybody who's in it, it seems ridiculous from afar, but there's nothing more powerful than feeling like you're a part of something, be it a family, an organization, a team. And when you feel like you are a, po- a part of that team, those speeches do mean something to you. And in a sport like football where you are really in many ways responsible for the well-being of your teammate – physically and financially, it does matter. And so if it's a corny speech that I know wouldn't work anywhere else but in that room at that time and I buy into it, it's fine. It's fun. You feel a part of it. The tough thing with with our speeches, though, with the Ravens was Ray gave most of them. They made no sense. No, it wasn't that they made sense. It's that my man... He recycled. He recycled some speeches. <laughs> wow. 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 Really? He'd been in the game for a long time, and he delivered a lot of impassioned speeches. And I wasn't. I hadn't been there long enough, Wait but the guys see. who had been around <laughs> for a while, they'd be calling out lines before he hit them. They'd call out the no, lines before they hit them. Great. Call out lines Wait, before they hit them. Did anyone say, like, tell Ray, like, hey, you've done this before? <laughs> That's the best part. And that was one of the best things about Ray Lewis is – he didn't act like that, like unapproachable. Yeah, people would roast him for his speeches, <laughs> and he would laugh it off and keep it moving. And I, I never did, but other people would. No, but he knew like three years from now, this one's coming back up again because it's going to be a new roster. <laughs> yeah. hey, he the goat for that. I feel like so Ed Reed was laughing at it, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't just Ed. Like it was an open. It was that kind of open joke. People would roast Ray about that, and then <laughs> he'd go out and make 15 tackles, and then be fine. I got to imagine there's some similar stuff that happened in the heat locker room the last few years with Udonis Haslam. Like oh. the stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. is They love it, but it's the same sort of thing where it's like they know what the lines are before they're coming. I want to know, like, do we have, could we have like a top five of things that Ray Lewis said over and over and over and over and over again? Is that something that's possible? Like what were the types of things that stood out that Ray Lewis would recycle in speeches? Um, I think the a lot of them became more public. So like the one about how important the team was to the city was a powerful one, and he meant it every second of it. We just heard him say it before. And, like, how uh, the 
crime stats were impacted by whether the team won or lost. Who knows whether it's true or false, but when you're about to go step out there on the field, am I playing for my brothers around me? No, I'm out here saving lives. That is, I mean, that dude, works. Well, yeah. I, I, I remember that was a, I remember a couple times when we got that speech. It was a good one. He meant it every, every word he said of it. Uh, every we, time he said it. Every time he said it. It was a good one. Was there any truth to it? I have no idea. I didn't do the research. We, had, we not out here fact checking. Did Damn, you win? Greg, <laughs> Greg the perpetual curious. journalist. Take take your journalism hat, hat off for a second, Scoops. Okay. That thing was working. Right. It was popping. Okay. I liked that it was just an ability to sort of go into reruns the same way that like if you just went and saw your favorite artist perform your favorite song the first time you'd be like absolutely blown away you remember forever cheering like crazy and then by like the 10th or 12th time you've seen a performance like eh, all right Ray's doing the, this one before Ray's doing the crime speech <laughs> right right <laughs> I I prefer to look at it different sing-alongs as as people would get excited lighters whoa <laughs> I like Ray holding the mic yeah. and like holding it to the crowd to finish part yeah, of the like, you guys know where we're going yeah. with this one <laughs> <laughs> Did the details ever change? Like the stories become more fantastic as the years would go by? No, I, they were pretty consistent. The man knew his, his classics. You know, you get mad when you go to a concert and they want to play the new album stuff. Ray wasn't playing that this game, This guy knows baby. his audience. I know what you came for. No, but I'm saying like one time is like, you know... There is a hundred people, and then the next time it was like there was five thousand people. You know what I mean? Like the, the stories just became more and more no, ridiculous. No, he kept he kept the stories consistent because he he knew we knew what was coming. He knew what he was giving us. We would accept it. It was fine. We go out and hit people in the mouth. That's the fact of the matter. Is the pregame speech? It's a great thing for movies. It's fun for hard knocks. Pre-game speech ain't never made a tackle. Not one tackle in the history of football. Pre-game speech ain't never thrown a touchdown. Pre-game speech ain't never blocked nobody. You know what happens? You go out there and whoop some ass. That pre-game speech sound a whole lot better afterwards. <laughs> Bro, when I was in high school, it was a guy on our team trying to give a pre-game speech. He just punted everybody up like, man, another thing, and this and this. After he got finished talking, my boy said, Man, sit your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that was the funniest <laughs> stuff in the world, bro. What, was it somebody who plays or doesn't play that much? Nah, yeah, bro, you don't even play that that's... much to be doing all this. <laughs> you ain't going to contribute to none of this shit you just see here, bro. <laughs> do, you, do you have someone that you, I mean, you don't have to name names, that you remember was just terrible at the speech? At the like, terrible at this pregame speech. Like, they tried to motivate you, and you're like, hmm. Was it always Ray making the speech? No, it wasn't always okay. Ray. I mean, Ray was the go-to guy for most games. And we didn't have a pregame speech for every game. But sometimes you needed a little pep in your step. Ed you, Reed ever step up? Oh, yeah. Ed was more low-key with his pregame speeches. But you guys have seen him in the locker room. It's not an organized thing. You saw him in Miami. It was just about, I think, the pregame speech is more about the credibility that you have built up along the way, which is why Ray could say whatever the hell he wanted in any order he wanted at any time that he wanted. It was Ray Lewis saying it, so it meant something. And I think the same was true for Ed Reed and anyone else who was of that caliber to make a speech. And Ed was more judicious in the times where he would talk. Ray was more extroverted and outspoken. But when Ed said something, it was... Rarely, like, loud and emotional, except for the times when it needed to be. But people shut up because Ed doesn't talk, and Ed's not here for the cameras. He's not here for anything but winning and money. Everybody's there for money. Well, Great. like Juju pointed out, like, if you're not that good, then it's kind of awkward. So who's the worst player you played with who gave a great pregame speech? Oh, so I think that happens when you get a player who has something going on in his personal life. Ooh, that okay. that okay. guy who may not be that important to the team, but he got the week of practice off because he had to go spend time with his mom who's in bad health. That guy comes back. Oh, that man. Doesn't was, matter if he's third string, left guard, doesn't make a difference. That guy comes back. It's a big pregame speech. Yeah, and you're motivated because it's, it's your brother who's going through something and you care about him. And. You guys are angling for me to give you my pregame speech. You're not getting it. Oh, did you give one? I want it. How yeah. many times did you give a pregame speech? I mean, a couple times. How many times. people were sick? Like, well, how do we get to you, <laughs> respectfully? <laughs> Come on, you can do it, man. Yeah, go ahead. No. Recreate a pregame. Uh, Come on, Michael no, Irvin has done it on this show. I, I can't follow Michael Irvin's pregame There's speech. There's a few building blocks, like a few things you need to have in okay. the speech. At least Irvin has it. It's the moment. It's our time. It's oh. out on this field. It's us against the world. It's, the it's thing all that stuff. that Michael Irvin has is 
a preacher's command. Mm -hmm. And Ray has that also, where it's about the timing, it's about the enthusiasm, and underrated, the gravel. Got to have a little gravel in your voice. A little gravel in your voice that speaks to real pain in your life, that'll grab hold. I don't care what you do. You can read out a nursery rhyme if you got a little gravel. Mm, it feels like a three-game speed. That's a good start. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Hickory dickory dock. Oh, I'm ready to hit. I'll run through a wall for you. The mouse. The mouse ran up the clock. Ran oh, up the clock. I light that clock Random up. Random spoons. <laughs> on August 23rd, the summer event, Ahsoka, arrives on Disney+. Plus. Witness the thrilling adventure of former Jedi Knight Ahsoka Tano as she uncovers a disturbing new threat to the galaxy far, far away. Don't miss the two-episode premiere event of the highly anticipated Star Wars series, Ahsoka, streaming August 23rd, only on Disney+. Plus. Don Lebatard. Many of you, by the way, are writing in and you're saying, Dan, quit being so mean to co-hosts that you always deem incompetent. That's the formula, man. Me being mean to the co-host is what allows Stugatz to take a very wealthy vacation right now. Stugatz. It's a winning position for everyone but me. Have you guys not figured this out yet? That's the whole thing is me being rotten straight, man. As everyone else gets to be incompetent, then I yell at them for being incompetent. And here's the miracle of it. It's the magic elixir. Bad, which is the only thing Greg Cody can be, becomes good and lovable. And it's because standing next to obnoxious, strident me makes everyone look that way. Yeah, and the brush with death helped. Yeah, that was planned by me. The whole thing was contrived. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. All right, Greg Cody has addressed the elbow. He's no longer dripping. This is one of many injuries for the great Greg Cody. You're mystery blood age already. <laughs> is that a... Uh, no, I, I know where it comes from. It like, was dry blood, yeah, though. Blood seldom surprises me. I'm mystery blue, or, or I'm, I'm mystery bruise age uh, already. Like I, really? I'll, but I like I also just bump into things all the time. You know what right. I mean? So like I just forget that I bumped. It's not like I wake up and I have like a giant one on my ribs and I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> I could track it back, but like I get mystery bruises, but not just bleeding. Yeah, I mean, I got I got mystery sorenesses mm -hmm. where it just pop up, I just slept, whatever. I'm just, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not much of a mystery. I mean, yeah, or vocation okay. for okay. a long That's time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good Good point, Roy. It's not a mystery. I got a trick toe every now and then. <laughs> really? Toe? Which one? Really? Does it tell jokes or what? Why is it? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you bring that up. I okay. I know TikTok is like the most addictive of all the social medias out there, and it perfectly learns you. And I'm in sleight of hand TikTok. I'm deep in sleight of hand TikTok, Ooh, and there's this what's one. What's it like? Oh. It's great. There's this one guy. I got to find his name. I'll send you some clips. Please do. He, he I'm does in. incredible tricks where he just shuffles the cards and picks out any card that you call for out of a 52 deck. He puts a timer out there so that you know that's not editing. He tests the gravity. He does all these things. Then tests he does the gravity? It. Yeah, because apparently some people can use tricks with, I don't know. So, like, if the gravity doesn't work, we're in big trouble. It's yeah. not floating. It's actually trick. floating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something else. But anyway, I'll send you some links. We'll do, we'll talk about that later. But I'm glad that you brought that up because yesterday, yesterday, Dominique, you weren't here, but someone said to someone in this room, and I'll let you guess who, someone went across the table over there and said, you look like you know a lot of magicians. <laughs> Can you guess who that was said to? And do you think that should have been an insult? Who looks like they know a lot of magicians? Hmm. I ain't gonna lie, a lot of magicians looking at juggles out there. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's more, I don't, I don't see a lot of magicians. I see a lot of Magic the Gathering looking people out there. Like, they play magic cards. You remember in high school, there was a table? I don't feel like this organization is comprised of a lot of magic players. So who was it? It was Jeremy. Someone it was told me. Jeremy that he looks really? like he has a lot of magicians. Yeah. It was Tony. It's it was fair. Tony who said it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't protect Tony. Tony said I look like I know a lot of magicians, and I resent that comment. Do you that know a single magician? <laughs> Uh, that, is a, that is a magician's coat, yeah. if we're being honest. Yeah, yeah it's fair. Who knows, it's fair. Who knows a ma magician? Uh, he's insane. You know, Jeremy. I did the musical theater thing. In oh, turn, yeah. you got to know some magicians. Okay. And yeah, maybe one or two people also know a card trick or two. But 
you know. It was one of the ruder comments. I think one of the rudest, and I felt bad because I did it and it was a joke, but it didn't land the way I wanted it to, was Kugler. One of the like, first weeks that he was here, I was going to go have lunch with him, welcome him into town. And we were going to go to lunch and we're like, where, do, where are we going to go? And I go, where do you want to go? Because you look like someone that has a lot of dietary restrictions. <laughs> wow. God damn. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, Billy. I just want to make sure, you know what I mean? Man, Kobe knew like he got a couple of tricks up his sleeve himself. Yeah. And a couple of allergies as well. <laughs> he, does, he does look like he was a magician at one point. Like he tried, it didn't work out. Keep a, keep a dove in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you watch the, the videos of Googler. Do you watch the videos of how they solve like the magic tricks, like how it works? No. Like I saw how the, the the one where you pour the salt into your hand and then you pour it out into like the cup. I saw how that one works. It's a fake thumb. Uh, Spoiler. It alert. is. Uh oh. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Was, do you want to know? I mean, no, but no. it just kind of came up, and I was like, well, I guess I know now. Yeah, I wasn't you just ruined, for it. You just ruined at least one child riding with their daddy's <laughs> no, somewhere. There's no whole no perception of this world. That's Thanks, right. Billy. Congratulations. Sorry. Here's a little known fact: uh, Christopher, when he was about, I would say, twelve to fourteen years old, that era, loved the idea of becoming a magician, and we actually sent him to. I didn't know there was such a thing, but we actually sent him to magic camp. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yes. Thank you so much for yes. this, Greg. Keep going, by the way. For a couple of years of his life, <laughs> he camp. was obsessed with magic. Like, anytime you'd, you would be walking through a mall and there was anything that looked like a magic store, he would spend a half hour in there. He would ask for, you know, things that cost hundreds of dollars. This is the best day ever. Yeah. It was crazy. You was, wouldn't buy those things, of course, right? No, but right. but uh, there were a couple of Christmases in a row where if you got him anything magic related, it was like his favorite gift. Did anything take? Like, does he have tricks up his sleeve? I, I think that. Well, he, this is not really related directly to magic, but he he can juggle better than most people. Uh, I bet if you ask him, that he remembers a couple of magic tricks. But juggling's like a skill. It's not magic, right? Right, right. But yeah. they tend to be uh, a little bit. Uh, related. What about, can you name some of the Christmas gifts you gave him that yeah. made him ecstatic over magic? <laughs> there were definitely some some trick decks of cards. That what? Was, that was a big thing. Uh, it's not all sleight of hand. Sometimes it is. You know, did he ever try to saw Michael in half? And you're like, no, 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 we're not there yet, Christopher. <laughs> not no. Michael. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's favorite. favorite. Yeah, yeah. If it was no. the other way around, maybe it would have been fine. Yeah. yeah, but there were things where you know, it there'd be something on a table, and he'd lift something off, and it's no longer there. You know. I want the Greg Cody performance reaction to all these lame ass magic tricks. You had to pr pretend like you were impressed by them. Well, a couple of them were actually like, "Wow, how'd you do that?" You know, <laughs> really? I mean, seriously. I mean, I'm I'm spending hundreds of dollars on this summer magic camp. Hopefully, he comes home with something that uh, impresses me. Uh -oh. Should have got him an Anthony Hardaway jersey. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, there we go. There it is. <laughs> you want to go to Magic Camp? And There you go. Are you go in there and hoop? That would have been I cheaper than uh, Magic Camp. I'll tell you that. Yeah, a a yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, I I don't want to <laughs> body shame anyone, but. Who's spending their summer doing magic tricks? Like, I feel like summer is for running and fun and outside, right? Well, I guess in Miami, it's too hot. It's yeah. a fair question, though. I mean, who goes to magic camp? I had no idea there was Chris a magic camp. It was, uh, I, I dropped him off and picked him up every uh, day. And let, let me just say that the uh, the nerd quotient was uh, on the high side. <laughs> oh, yeah, nothing, oh, man, that's messed nah. up. Nothing Chris, I got you back. Magicians, in defense nerds. of the magicians. Right. They are... Talented, I love you, and extraordinary people who have mastered a craft that none of us have spent the time to learn. Praise to the magicians, giant nerd though. Yeah, with that jacket on, I know you got a, <laughs> a handkerchief that keep going in that mother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Copperfield is a nerd, is he not? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. And and that was you, you just reminded me, Juju. That was another thing that Christopher mastered was whatever that whole. Thing was where you pulled something out of your sleeve and it kept coming and then all of a sudden it was in your pocket. And, what? You know, yeah, just uh, the the, uh, the big uh, handkerchiefs, you know, the endless handkerchief. Right. I don't know. Yeah, this is uh, 20 years ago. So. You you do look like you're, um, Jeremy, you look like you're about five years away from taking quarters out of kids' ears. <laughs> it's inevitable. Trick, it's you know what you got, but you guys talked earlier about like uh, not liking that you have to pretend things are interesting for kids. Correct. That's like one of my favorite things as a camp counselor is to pretend that I'm really excited and then watch a kid get really excited because I'm really excited. Like I can't wait 
to constantly be faking excitement over really lame shit like that. Uh, that's what you say. Yeah. You have to do it all the time. You get tired of it. Trust me. <laughs> that's what we do on the show every day anyway. But Greg, it seems like you excited. are faking it with Christopher. You were genuinely entertained. He had a couple of tricks that were, you know, rudimentary magic tricks that when done well, it makes you go, wow, really? How'd you do that? You know. Well, I appreciate how you made that blood disappear. That was Thank you. magical. Thank you very much. I was talking about your your other ailments that you had. You came in here earlier today complaining about a bum hammy. I pulled a hamstring. I don't think I pulled it. Uh, Bammy. What's a very minor injury that's a uh, muscle injury that's a not tweak? A, a, strain? Tweak, a tweak? A tweak, a strain. I was uh, bowling, of all things, and my left hammy um, uh, sort of made me cry out in anger. Twinkle toes, Cody. In agony. Yeah. So that's, you know. How'd you bowl? Terrible. Well, this part, Chris Christopher awful. had a bowling league or bowling team he started, right? Are you on that team? Yeah, I am. And we, and our first league night is in like two weeks. So I got to. You get to make it? Or? Little I, practice. Was there a tryout? No. <laughs> you got to rest that thing up. You I know mean. what? It's a handicap league. So the worst I do is fine as long as, you know, you know, handicap leagues. Wait. There's handicap and bowling? Oh, I, yeah. I think we use different terminology now. It used to be frustrating, though. It's frustrating, though, because I used to be a good bowler back in the day. Definitely but able. Not now. Well, what are you bowling? What were you at, like the 160s? What were we at? I I bowled a 167, but it took me two games to do it. Ah. <laughs> I've Seriously, I'm... A couple I'm, of 80-somethings got me up. I, shows down there. That's, our, that's our classic old man. <laughs> it is an old man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So are the people, is the requirement of the league to be of uh, disabilities? No, no, that's not a handy. No, that's no. <laughs> that's what it sounded like. Oh, no. Like, yeah. no. No. <laughs> no, they call it a handicap league. I'm sorry. Let's go back to make fun of Jeremy with his abracadabra ass face. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's do that. Make fun of me. We got two minutes to do it. Presto changeo. <laughs> jacket wearing ass. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Dominique asked me why I was wearing this jacket when I walked in oh. today. And it's just Florida, man. Why are you well, in Miami? That jacket is <laughs> hot Florida. Florida is It's a members only jacket. Yeah, see, no, 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 no. Well, you guys don't you understand. You got on a, a, a khaki motorcycle yes, jacket. Oh, what, type, what type of motorcycle you wear khakis to ride? A Vespa. A moped. <laughs> I got on a moped jacket. <laughs> Make it up, my boy. My bad, bro. Nah, it's, it's fine. I get it. You the man, bro. <laughs> I do. I get it. I understand who I am. I get it. Tony's standing outside of the studio pointing at me and laughing at me. Now he opened it. Yeah, he opened the door. Thanks, Tony. Oh. Oh. <laughs> khaki, khaki bike gloves. The driver gloves. And I like With that. no fingers. I like that you take off your regular shoes and put on some loafers before you drive your boat. <laughs> With a khaki helmet. <laughs> you know, I thought to myself this morning, what's the worst thing that happens if you wear this jacket? If you want to wear this jacket, you feel you know. good about yourself, and the opposite has happened. So oh, thanks for that one, guys. You're like welcome. It. It's a beautiful color. It's like almond spread. Brand. <laughs> you're, you're just bullied by someone in a denim shirt. I look fresh as I'd wear oh, a denim I can't shirt. Say we can't are. say that. Here we are. <laughs> I'm waiting. Roast me. That's all you got? I don't have anything. That's it? No. Uh, I embarrassed myself enough today. Speaking of embarrassing, do you think uh, Mike Tomlin and the Steelers will blink this year? <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't never blink. They got the driest eyes in the league. <laughs> Them boys just, they only use Visine. Never real tears. Only Visine. We don't blink. It gets the red out. <laughs> <laughs> they have a... It most certainly does, Roy. <laughs> interesting quarterback. Interesting quarterback room over there. They do. This this segment is off the off the rails, what they call it. I'm so sorry. I had to apologize to Jeremy Tache. I don't apologize to his ta-da ass face. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs>